Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing my review of this Marlin 336 BL in 3030. As you can probably tell, I've changed a couple things about it, and we'll definitely be going over that uh, later on in the video. But first, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and roll in some footing, uh, shooting footage with this thing, and then we'll dig a little bit deeper into what this rifle is and how I have it configured. direction up and away that's where I had to be uh, <sighs> <sighs> that is last just... round is the hardest round to pull out of there so once again, this is a new production. It's definitely worth mentioning that new production um, Marlin lever action, specifically the 30, uh, 336. Um, and as you can probably tell, I have a Midwest Industries handguard on this, and that's for a couple reasons, and I'll definitely touch on that later on in the video. But first, let's talk about kind of what this rifle is, how it's, how it's set up from the factory, uh, and then we can start digging into some of the things I've changed and possibly why. So uh, up here at the front, we have a hooded front sight, um, which is kind of interesting. You don't necessarily see that on a ton of uh, other guns of the sort out there, at least not from my own personal experience, which albeit is fairly limited. Um, but these ones do have a hooded front sight, almost Mauser-esque. And then the front sight itself, at least in this case, this could definitely change depending on which model you have. Um, is just kind of like a little, almost like copper bead, almost. Uh, basically shows up white to my eye, in the sunlight at least, um, but at least here in this lighting, it looks a little bit more just like a copper bead. Um, and it's okay. Uh, that's, I'll touch more on the sights later. Um, beyond that, we have what Marlin advertises is a six round tube, um, which again, I'll, I'll probably be touching on. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just say now, uh, good luck getting six in there. It probably depends on what type of ammunition you're running. Generally speaking, I can get five plus one. Um, that's kind of the standard capacity that I've been able to get to fit. If you really, really try and have a pretty short overall length cartridge, you might be able to get six in the tube. Um, but it is what it is. Moving back here, we have our rear sight. Now, this is windage uh, adjustable by drifting it in the dovetail, which um, is okay, I guess. It's That's a serviceable way to use it, um, especially since this thing is drilled and tapped for an optic rail. You might kind of have these iron sights as an afterthought, but having it windage adjustable just by drifting it in a dovetail is not the most precise method in the world, and you can Definitely accidentally go too far and just kind of keep bracketing your actual zero you want. But nonetheless, that's kind of the standard for lever guns. So that's what this has. Um, it's got almost a semi buckhorn sight. I think that's what they refer to it as. And again, it's, it's okay. Really, I'm not a huge fan of these sights at all. Um, and we'll probably talk a little bit more about that later when we talk about the accuracy. Now, the way that this thing adjusts for elevation is it has almost this little step ladder thing going on here, and you can lift up the front or the rear sight and just push that step ladder as far as you need to, to be able to raise that rear sight up to be able to adjust for targets further away. Um, I've kind of cooked up some hand loads that seem to be more or less point of aim, point of impact at the lowest setting at 100 yards, and that's the furthest I've shot this thing, so that's been good enough for me but it is a little bit more adjustable and theoretically, especially if you numbered it yourself, which could be hard to do, um, it could be fairly easy to actually uh, know what your dopes, quote unquote, would be for this. Um, so there's that. Uh, as I already said, it is drilled and tapped for a scope rail up here 
or as I've seen a lot of people do, um, putting some sort of peep rear sight back here. Uh, just be, uh, again, these these the rear sights sights in general aren't great. So having a rear mounted like red dot or scope or even a peep sight uh, will definitely help with this thing. Does have what is probably my favorite feature on this rifle, even though the execution isn't great, is this side loading gate here. Um, this allows you to load rounds in one at a time from the side, which is a lot more, um, I guess, intuitive or makes a lot more sense from a modern context where I don't want to have to be reaching up here to fiddle with anything. Uh, don't typically like putting my hand in front of the muzzle when I can avoid it, uh, unless you have one of those malfunctions where your thumb goes in front of the barrel. Some of you guys may get that reference. Um, but I, I really do like this loading gate, although it is extremely tight. I've kind of joked around in the past saying that uh, Diane Feinstein put this gun together because she it just really doesn't want me to be able to load it. It's gotten better over time, but it kind of is what it is. Uh, the action itself at this point in time isn't pretty, it isn't bad. It's, it's fairly smooth. Now granted that hammer's down, having the hammer down makes it even smoother. Um, but the action itself at this point is fairly smooth. Uh, it hasn't always been that way, and I'll talk about that more later. Um, but at this point, it's fairly smooth. Now I have a couple hundred rounds through it at this point, so I think that's helped significantly. But you'll probably have noticed at this point that I have uh, paracord wrapped this lever itself. And that was a necessity for me to be able to complete the review on this rifle. Uh, this thing came out of the box with extremely sharp edges on just about everything and this lever included in that. And it, it was really just chewing my hands up pretty significantly trying to run this thing. So putting this paracord wrap has pretty much fixed that. And if, if you guys have seen the new, um, I think 4570 that Marlin's doing, that's all kind of blacked out and with a threaded barrel, they're actually including it with a paracord wrapped lever. And I don't know whether that's just for the cool guy look of it or whether uh, they just didn't want to have to do the machining and they knew people would complain about that. So they just say, hey, we'll fix that from the factory. We'll wrap it for you and then you don't have to worry about it. But uh, anyway, that's what I did here and it's working out pretty well. Um, as far as the actual um, firing of the <laughs> rifle goes, the trigger is okay. Um, it, it, the, the hammer does have a half cock position, which is kind of nice. And it also has a cross bolt safety, which I am not a really big fan of. Now there are pros and cons to it. One of the things that I like about it is, let's say I wanted to you know, walk through the woods with this in the half cock position. With that safety on, I can safely drop that hammer and even if my thumb slips, the gun's not gonna go off. So that's kind of a nice thing to be able to have. Um, the downside of the safety is when you do actually cock the hammer, that safety does nothing to prevent you from actually pulling the trigger or letting that hammer fall. Now, it won't ignite the, car, uh, the round inside the chamber because it won't fall all the way, but it, it will fall. So, uh, as you can see there, when you're in the heat of the moment, you got a you know elk or a deer or a bear, as you'll see later, in your sights, and you hear that click, you might think, hey, this gun's empty, uh, let me rack another round in, click rack another round in, click, before you realize, hey, that safety's on. Now, you might say, well, that's a training thing, that's you being an idiot. Uh, to some extent, yes, but I do think that that's a very bad design because I am not the only one that's fallen prey to that, as you'll see later on in the video. But that safety is there, um, so you can safely carry it, quote unquote, safely carry it um, in the half cock position or drop it to the half cock position then take the safety off, and then when you're ready to cock the hammer back, and then you can fire. Moving on back, uh, one of the things that I do actually like about the design of the 336 is this curved wrist here. That does give me a much more ergonomic grip on this thing compared to some of the other lever guns out there on the market, um, specifically like the Henry's, which I'll be showing you here in a second. Having that curved wrist is just, it gets my wrist better in line with it and makes it a lot easier to manipulate for me and just more comfortable to hold on to for me. Um, so I actually really like that. And then the stock itself is a you know fairly basic stock. You have the wood. Uh, it has the checkering on it, um, as well as the factory handguard, if it was still attached. 
um, has the factory uh, has the checkering on it which is okay it, it's not super grippy but it's also keeps it from being totally smooth uh, works perfectly fine for me some people complain that it's not done by hand anymore honestly I, I, I could care less if I was a collector maybe but as someone who's just looking to affordably get into a lever gun um, it's perfectly serviceable in my opinion and then we have a rubber uh, pad back here which doesn't do a whole lot for recoil absorption but it doesn't really need a ton of recoil absorption in my opinion for 3030 um, but it is there which gives it a positive grip into your shoulder so as you are firing this thing it does um, keep it from slipping around in your shoulder not that that's necessarily again a huge issue for 3030 but I do appreciate that um, so um, kind of the the elephant in the room here is this hand guard uh, this is a Midwest Industries hand guard that I've added to it now um, the way these are designed is any of the uh, 336s or I think uh, like Winchester Model 94s that have just the end cap for the uh, hand guard this will work with if it's a barrel band I believe they're in the process of making an adapter to make this work but honestly this hand guard is what got me into lever guns in the first place I'd never really cared too much about them I appreciated the history of them I appreciated their you know that their place and time but to me they weren't super duper practical because uh, well, for several reasons first of all limited magazine capacity the fact that it's not a semi-automatic it's fairly fast action but not a semi-automatic um, and just the, the inability to mount a light to it prevented it from being a good self-defense tool from my perspective but a couple years ago when I was at SHOT Show I saw I think it was on one of the Marlin guide guns in 4570 I saw one of these hand guards and it just kind of everything clicked for me like hey this turns this from just a cool piece of history to an actual functional firearm in many different contexts I mean just look at this just 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 look, look, at, look, it. look at it just would you look would, at would you look at it that would you just look at this right here <laughs> um, um, and it's just, I don't know, it just does something to me. I don't know, but my pants, pants are feeling a little tighter now that I picked this thing up. So from that point on, it's like, eventually I'm gonna get into this Marlin uh, game or just the lever action game in general. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out and, and see, see what it's all about. And as you can see, I've mounted a light to it um, because for me, after seeing this, it opened up a world of possibilities for people who live in states where they can't otherwise own um, military quote-unquote style rifles like AR-15s, AK-47s, etc. Some people just are, don't have access to those so they might be limited to something like a lever action and I wanted to see how practical something like this could be in a modern context in the context of self-defense, um, home defense, or even uh, certain types of hunting specifically like hog hunting or other varmint hunting that you can do at night so now with this hand guard I can very easily and ergonomically mount a light this is a Streamlight Protac Rail 1 um, I'm a really big fan of these lights I have a dedicated review on them I own three of them now um, and this makes it very easy to with just a standard firing grip get on that light kick it off and again if you're hunting hogs if you're inside your home or anything like that um, that just makes it so much better in those contexts because now I can possibly identify the target which is again something that you were limited to the way these typically come out of the box now some people will say that this is is sacrilegious that I'm I've ruined this gun in fact someone actually said uh, uh, I think when I posted on Instagram someone said you've ruined that gun and that's going to bring me into one of the other things that I wanted to test out with this rifle and that is how much of an effect Freedom Group has had on these rifles and uh, for those of you unfamiliar Freedom Group is the company that basically caused Remington to go bankrupt caused their quality to go downhill drastically and and now or in addition to caused Marlin's um, quality to go downhill drastically now um, out of the box again I could tell that there were some significant issues going on both ergonomically fit and finish wise and all that like I said already the um, edges on the lever were just atrocious um, it was really chewing out my hand and straight out of the box the first rounds I put through this thing I, the rounds kept getting stuck in the chamber now shooting PPU which I've heard other Marlins have had issues with in the past but it was to the point where you had to like punch your hand down into the lever to get it to open up and my friend Christian who was doing it with me he's got 
you know, limited use of his hand and it was nearly impossible for him. He had to take his other hand, pull it open to be able to rack the next round in. And that mixed with some of the other things going on, like the fact that this rear sight has to be drifted over quite a bit to actually be zeroed with factory ammo um, is, is pretty ridiculous in my opinion. Um, and just a couple other quality issues have gone on that's just really shown me how bad Freedom Group has messed up Marlin. And I, I wanted to see, okay, well, this is my own experience with, with a current production Freedom Group Marlin. I wanna see what a prior to Freedom Group Marlin 336 looks like. So um, every year I go to this Becker West gathering. It's a gathering of uh, Becker Knife fans uh, here, actually pretty close to where I live. And one of my friends who was gonna be there said, hey, I have a 2001 Marlin 336. Do you want me to bring it so we can compare and contrast? And I said, yes, so let's go ahead and cut to that footage right now. All right, so at this point, um, what I wanna talk about is the similarities and differences between this new production Marlin under Freedom Group and then my friend Nick's Marlin here, which is from 2001, yes. which is pre-Freedom Group. Um, so for those of you who have been familiar with the quality assurance issues with companies like Remington, a lot of that stems from their association with Freedom Group. And the same things contribute to the Marlins. So when you purchased this one, you specifically wanted to find a model pre-Freedom Group, correct? Correct. Why, why was that? Um, everybody said that fit and finish was a lot worse or not nearly as good as it was with the Freedom Group Marlins. Yeah, and, and so our goal here is to hopefully demonstrate at least some of those uh, issues. Now, obviously, as you can tell, he's got the stainless steel model. He's got one with the barrel band versus the end cap like I have. You know, this is the blued finish one. Um, but still, there's some of those inherent um, quality control and just refinement issues mm -hmm. that are present on this. So, as you can tell, I have wrapped the handle or the lever um, on my Marlin with paracord. And that is because the edges on this thing were so sharp it was physically uncomfortable to use. Um, it would actually chew up my hands pretty aggressively to where I could maybe put 20 rounds through it before I was just done for the day. Um, yours does not have that issue, correct? No, it's actually smooth all, all the way around. I could shoot this thing all day and not have any qualms about it. Yeah, and just as a way of comparison, like it's very similar feeling to my Henry that I have, mm. which is much more rounded. It's it's not going to chew up your hand using it that way. I would say the wood quality on yours is probably a little bit better as well. It's a little darker. I kind of I kind of like that. Yeah, it's really nice grain on here. It, it complements the stainless steel finish really well. Yeah. Also, um, how about your loading gate? Is your loading gate super it's, resistant? It's a little stiff. It is still a little it, stiff. It, it can be a little stiff. Yeah. But I mean, it, it opens just fine. It's just, I think it's the spring okay. in there, the tube. Yeah, because like on mine, the loading gate makes it almost impossible to use. It's like actively fighting you and wanting to prevent you from being able to load the gun, which uh, it's not good. It, like I, the way I've described it, and I've probably already said it in this video, maybe not, depending on how I edit this. Uh, it feels like <laughs> Diane Feinstein built this one. He's like, I don't want you able to load this gun. Um, so again, just it, it, it's going to be hard because you can't feel these two guns that on here through the, the video. <laughs> um, but just looking and feeling these two guns side by side, yeah. you can absolutely tell that there's a quality difference. Um, Definitely. Now, I, I've heard that some things are changing over at Marlin because of what's been going on with Freedom Group and Remington and all that. But even then, if you have the option to get a pre-Freedom Group Marlin, such as this one. Highly recommended. Highly, highly recommend it. Yes. Um, it. And one of the things we were actually talking about before we turned on the camera, so actually uh, in two days, three days, I have the Midwest Industries handguard coming for this. Um, and he was saying that that's not something he can do with this barrel band. They just announced a new adapter to be able to do that with this. So there's even that. If, if you wanted to modernize it. I may do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think it would look really good, the uh, black I think handguard on the yeah. stainless steel. Um, any, any other differences that you were able to notice just between the two of these? Not directly. Um, I know the serial number on this one and that weird it's square like the, yeah, thing. The, the dot matrix yeah, it's pattern. definitely it's not on QR here. Code. Yeah. Um, I kind of like how they kept the, they kept the receiver all clean. Yeah. Um, but I mean, other than that. Now, what, uh, is yours, how accurate is yours? Just, uh, throw um, that up there. 
I'd say it's pretty damn. Okay. Yeah. Mine, not so much. And can I check here? I'm going to trade you real quick. I want to check his rear sight. So on my rear sight, in order to get it zeroed with good factory new production ammo, that rear sight is drifted considerably off to one side to actually get it to hit point of aim, point of impact. Mm. But looking at yours, yours looks nicely centered. Yeah. There's like even space on that rear sight. Not the case on mine. So again, just another one of those quality differences where somewhere along the line, something on this thing got misaligned to where in order to zero it, it's like a Wasser 10 in the old days where you have to have that front post drifted all the way to one side to actually get it zeroed. Um, so again, just those little attentions to detail and things that make it just a more pleasurable shooting experience, mm -hmm. you seem to have lost with, with the new production Marlins. Now again, they're, that is subject to change. They could absolutely improve their their quality of production yeah but at least in this current state again getting this one uh which was produced within the last year or two um it's just an issue that i've run into so just kind of a bummer which is why again i think we can both say if you have the option between a new production marlin or one from you know early 2000s Three. late 90s yeah. or even earlier um you're probably gonna be happier. I would definitely pick up an earlier one. Yeah, I, I yeah. So I think we can both agree yeah. with that. Regardless of model, obviously, again, you can get the stainless steel ones. You can get blued ones from earlier as well. You're not limited to that respect. But unless there's a specific model that they're producing now that they didn't produce before, go older. Yeah, yeah, definitely go older. So uh, Nick, I guess really quick, the reason we're here making this video is we are currently at a knife gathering out yep. in uh in oregon uh pretty close to my house so you have some uh familiarity with the knife world what what, what do you do i have a little um years ago i started off doing uh custom leather sheaths for all kinds of different knives primarily mm -hmm. becker mm -hmm. uh, is where i got my start i didn't want to pay outrageous amounts where a lot of the custom knife makers were charging so decided to start making my own and eventually people took notice and I started selling them. Mm -hmm. um, now, however, I'm kind of gave up sheath making for uh, custom knives. Okay. You want to hold that? I'll yeah. Move this up. So yeah, he actually does some really great work with custom knives here. Let me get it to focus in on the knife. Um, do you make these handles as well? I did not make those, but we are thinking about getting into the stabilization and resin casting. Okay. Um, so if people want to look more to uh, your custom knives, where can they go? I'm on Facebook. It's uh, Nick's Customs on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, Nick's.Customs, and that's with a K. Um, where else am I? I'm on Twitter. I'm not on there very often. Yeah. It's, it's a little, uh, it got a little too political for me for some reason. I have a Twitter only to reserve the name. Yeah. I don't use it at all. Yeah, I do have a web page. It's linked from uh, my Facebook page as well. Um, however... That is mostly leather work, and so I don't <laughs> really use that, and it's not really updated. Okay. So so I'll, I'll have the links below if you want to check out his stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I've known this guy for a couple of years coming out to these knife gatherings for, for Becker Knives. Oh, yeah. So um, definitely check him out, and uh, we'll continue on with the rest of the review. So I cover all those things to say, and when that guy said, uh, you've ruined that gun, uh, I can confidently say Freedom Group messed up this gun long before it came into my hands. Um, but as, as you heard us mention in that video as well, the this issue with that safety, and um, I was talking about this with uh, the gunsmith at the gun store that I work at, and he was telling me that happened to my dad with a bear. He was aimed in on this bear, and the gun goes click, and the bear looks up at him, and thankfully it was a black bear, uh, and it just kind of walked away. But, uh, I can only imagine the pucker factor that went on when he went to pull the trigger on that bear. It went click, and then the bear looked right at him. Uh, and thankfully, I actually have the footage from that. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that right now. So uh, I really do appreciate um, him being willing to let me use that footage in this video. Uh, that again, is not something I would want to be on the end of. But again, it just goes to show that not only myself, but other, many, many other people out there have had an issue with this safety. I really think if, if I were going to have a safety like this on 
a lever gun, or really any gun for that matter, I want it to deactivate that trigger. And that's how most cross bolt safeties are. Most cross bolt safeties will not let you pull the trigger and drop the hammer or drop the firing pin or whatever else is going on in that, that, that type of gun. This is the only one I know of where with that safety engaged, you can pull the trigger and have that hammer drop, albeit not all the way to hit the cartridge. So that is a big, big issue in my opinion and something I really wish was different. I've heard there are ways to deactivate that trigger, but that's not a route that I necessarily, or sorry, deactivate the safety, but that is not a route that I want to go down. Um, but I guess that information is out there for those of you who have one uh, that do want to go down that route. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do while I was kind of getting experience with lever guns in the first place is see what the quality difference is uh, between a Marlin, as you see here on your right side, and a Henry, as you see here on your left side. Um, now, generally speaking, Henrys that are of the similar configuration to the Marlins are going to be a little bit more expensive between $100 to $200 more. In this case, this is the all-weather Henry, so it's significantly more expensive, but they do make models that are very similarly configured to how this one is out of the box that are really not that much different in price, but I wanted to see what the quality difference is, and um, I don't want to get too deep into that now because I'm sure this video will already be pretty long as it is, but um, I will have a dedicated comparison video between these two once I finish uh, doing my review process for this Henry. Um, but I can say the differences are pretty significant and definitely noticeable, um, but I'll, I'll cover a little bit more of that when I do the actual dedicated comparison video between this uh, Marlin 3030 and this Henry 3030. So let's go ahead and just run down the pros and cons as I see them for this Marlin 336 BL in 3030. Um, we'll go ahead and start with the pros. Um, it's very affordable. I was able to purchase this from my local gun store out the door $550. That is really not that bad for a, a lever action gun chambered in 3030. I, I was pretty satisfied with that price. Um, some of the other pros, uh, I do like that it has the side loading gate, even though the functionality isn't uh, where I'd want it to be. It is at least there, and I do prefer that style of loading for lever action guns. There are aftermarket parts that make it easier to load, um, and there are ways you can do that yourself, but you know, it is there. Um, beyond that, I, 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 half of me wants to like the safety because if I wanted to carry it in half cock, um, I can put it on safe drop the hammer to half cock and then immediately take it off safe. But if you forget to take it off safe, uh, you're going to run into the issues that I've already mentioned. 
Um, one of the other pros is that companies like Midwest Industries are now making parts for this. So again, I can now put a M-Lock handguard on here, which allows me to mount to light. So if I wanted to use this for hog hunting, or if I live in a non-free state where I don't have access to semi-automatic box fed uh, rifles, um, box magazine fed rifles, I can now run a lever action, have similar to AK-47 ballistics, at least in the case of 3030, um, coming out pretty quickly, um, albeit not as fast as an actual semi-automatic, but now I can actually mount accessories to this and use it in a much more functional way than I could have before. Does it take away from some of the um, tradition of them? Sure, but I, I'm one of those, uh, Niet rifle is not fine, or Nai uh, rifle uh, If you guys know what that language that is, go ahead and throw that in the uh, comment section. Um, I might have butchered it though. <laughs> so it might be hard to tell for you guys. Um, but I, I do like that. I also like that it is sight ejecting versus like the Winchester 19, uh, 184. Too many numbers up here. Um, so that I can actually have a optic mounted and it is again drilled and tapped for that. Um, also, I kind of like the large loop and I like the wrist here. That To me, that just works ergonomically once I wrap this thing up. Um, it, it just worked out really well for me. Now, let's go ahead and get into the cons. Cons. Um, I really hate the sights on this. <laughs> uh, it could be so much better. And in fact, one of my friends gave me, uh, I think it's the, the True Glow uh, fiber optic sights to try with this. And I, I'm, I may try that at some point. Um, but to me, the sights are one of the first things that I would replace if I were you. Now, there is a pretty hefty aftermarket for these. I think Excess Sights even makes uh, aftermarket sights for these. So that is a good thing. There are replacement ones out there, but the ones that come from the factory are just not good. The The hooded front sight is kind of a weird choice. I guess in theory, I kind of get it if you're walking around the woods, keeping that front sight from getting bumped around. But the, the hood sits so low that it actually does obscure um, your sight picture quite a bit. So if it was raised up, maybe if it gave a little bit more clearance to that front sight, maybe I'd be a little bit more open to it, but uh, I don't know. it kind of is what it is. With the rear sight too, just with the poor quality manufacturing, that rear sight has to be drifted quite a bit for this thing to actually shoot point of aim, point of impact. And that's just, you know, poor craftsmanship in my opinion. And again, one of the uh, side effects of this being a new uh, Freedom Group gun. Hopefully things will improve, but at, at least as of now, that's, that is a problem. Um, other issues, again, safety. I, I, again, I'm 50-50 with it. I, I really hate that it doesn't deactivate that trigger. If it did, I would be a way, way bigger fan of it than I am, but nonetheless, here we are. Uh, also, the, the fact that the chamber was just super, super nasty out of the box. I did end up swabbing it out after that first range trip, and I haven't had those same issues since, even with PPU ammo, but the fact that it came out like that way out of the box is just absolutely unacceptable to me. There's no reason a gun should do that. The Henry absolutely did not do that, especially with the PPU ammo. So I don't know, it is what it is. Uh, and then just the lever being super sharp out of the box. There's no reason for that. You know that that's how this firearm manipulates. I'm gonna be using that lever. And if you're gonna make it painful to use, that's just not acceptable in my opinion. Um, so there's some pros here, but there's also a lot of cons here. Um, hopefully Freedom Group will kind of get their grubby mitts off of Marlin and Marlin can go back to making the quality firearms that they were known for in the past. But at least as of right now, uh, that is certainly not the case. But a lot of those drawbacks that I mentioned are only side effects of the new production 336s. So if you can find a pre-Freedom Group Marlin 336, it, it wouldn't be a bad choice. Now, they might actually be more expensive than a new one just because people know that the quality was better back then. Um, but it may be worth investing in one of those. If you know you want a Marlin 336 and 3030, or if you want a Marlin 4570, I would recommend going pre-Freedom Group. And I know a lot of people who would say the exact same thing for what that's worth. But um, currently in its current iterations from Marlin, it's just kind of a, a bummer. Again, I found ways to mitigate the issues that I've had, and I'll probably end up putting a sight rail on this and just alleviating the issue with those iron sights. But uh, it just, it was kind of a bummer. If it wasn't for that loading gate versus that Henry, um, it, it would be just a simple choice to just chuck this and, and, and stick with that Henry. But uh, again, I'll dig a little bit deeper more into that later. Um, so there's a couple people I wanna thank uh, for this video. First of all, uh, one of my followers here locally in town uh, named Dave, he saw that I was doing some 3030 stuff and he contacted me and said, hey, I have a ton of just the projectiles for 3030 
I'm never going to reload for 3030. I've had them forever. Do you want them? And I said, absolutely. So I've been able to do a lot of the shooting for this at a much significantly reduced cost because I haven't had to pay for the projectiles. Typically in reloading, those are the most expensive components once you factor out the brass. So the fact that I've been able to shoot at a very cost-effective rate has really helped in the review process uh, for both this and that Henry. So I really want to thank Dave for being willing to do that. On top of that, I want to thank my patrons in general because they've been able to help me fill those gaps where I wouldn't otherwise have been able to provide ammo for tests like this or justify the time to head out to the range to do tests like this. They're the ones that make videos like this possible. So because of that, I post all my content to Patreon early. I do some exclusive content over there, including range updates. So as I was going through the testing of this rifle, I posted exclusive updates to Patreon so that those guys could stay on top of it. Uh, we do live streams, we do the question and answer videos for them. And then we also have a Discord server set up so we can have a little bit more direct interaction. Um, so if you wanna financially support the channel or any of those perks sound good to you, definitely check out my Patreon. Um, but if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw those in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Uh, if the, the whole Evergun thing is interesting to you, definitely subscribe to my channel so you can stay on top of these videos as they come out. But anyway, with all that said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.